Hi chemists. The purpose of this video is to focus on our last two types of chemical reactions, which are double replacements and combustions. By the end of this video, you should be able to identify a double replacement reaction and a combustion reaction, predict the products in words for double replacement reactions, predict the products in formulas for combustion reactions, and balance combustion reactions, because those can sometimes be a little tricky. So double replacement reactions can be recognized because you're going to have two compounds reacting together to give you two new compounds. For example, if you had copper one sulfate and beryllium oxalate, notice we have two compounds. And so um, basically these are just going to flip flop partners. It's important that you recognize you are never going to use the reactivity series for anything other than single replacement reactions. And since this is a double replacement reaction, you are not going to use it. So in this case, you are just going to flip the copper one and the beryllium to give you copper one oxalate and beryllium sulfate. A neutralization reaction is a special type of double replacement reaction. A neutralization reaction is a reaction between an acid and a base. Remember, an acid is a something that contains hydrogen as the cation, and a base is something that is a metal hydroxide, so for example, sodium hydroxide. Here's an example. If you had aluminum hydroxide and nitric acid, again, since you're seeing nitric acid, you're probably saying, well, I'm not sure what the actual name of it is. So that's why you have to go back to the original ionic name. So if it's nitric acid, you're going to have to change it to hydrogen nitrate. And then that'll make it a lot easier to predict the products. So aluminum is going to bump out the hydrogen and the hydrogen is gonna combine with the hydroxide. So you're gonna get aluminum nitrate plus hydrogen hydroxide, which if you recall, water is hydrogen hydroxide. In neutralization reactions, water is always going to be a product. The last type of chemical reaction is a combustion. This is a reaction that is um, basically defined by reacting with oxygen. So um, there's some really easy ways to tell what products you're going to get if it, a substance is reacting with oxygen. So for example, if your reactant contains carbon, then the product automatically is going to be CO2. If your reactant contains hydrogen, you're automatically gonna get H2O. If it contains sulfur, then you're automatically going to get SO2. And if it contains nitrogen, you're automatically gonna get N2. So let me show you how this works. So I ask you to predict the products and balance. So notice that we've got methane, which is comprised of carbon and hydrogen. We know that this is a combustion reaction because it contains oxygen. That's a clear indicator that it's a combustion reaction. So what we're going to do is since we see that we have carbon, we're going to get CO2. And since we have hydrogen, we're going to get water, H2O. So you just write them down as is. We then have to balance the equation. So that typically can be the hardest part of combustion reactions. So we're gonna list out everything that we have, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. I have one carbon, I have four hydrogen, and two oxygen. On the right-hand side, I have one carbon, I have two hydrogen, and be careful with this, I actually have three oxygen. Can you see that? Notice I have two here and I have one here. So that makes a total of three. So I'm gonna balance the um, hydrogen first because I see that's the thing that's not balanced. So notice it's four to two. So I put a two here. That'll change my hydrogen to four, but it also changes my oxygen. And again, be careful here because notice I have two oxygen here, and I have now two oxygen here for a total of four. Now we have to work on the oxygen. So notice it's two to four, so I'm gonna put a two in front, and then you can see now I have four oxygen. A really helpful tip 
is to always balance oxygen last. So save oxygen for last, that way you kind of know the way the coefficients are supposed to go just as long as you balance oxygen as the last resort. Let's try this one. So notice the reactant contains both hydrogen and nitrogen. So if it contains hydrogen, you're automatically going to write H2O. If it contains nitrogen, you're going to write N2. I have hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. I have three hydrogen, one nitrogen, and two oxygen on the left. I have two hydrogen, I have two nitrogen, and I have one oxygen. As I mentioned, we're going to save oxygen for last, so we'll start with the hydrogen. So when I put a three there, that'll change the number of hydrogen to six. That'll also modify the oxygen to three. Next up, you can choose to start with the nitrogen or you can go back to the hydrogen, it's up to you. But it looks like I chose to start with the hydrogen again. So notice that it's two times three, which would give me the number of hydrogens that I need, which is six. But then I now change the nitrogen to two. So that's good. Okay, so now the last piece of this is I have to balance the oxygen. So that's why my helpful tip here is to put the ideal decimal coefficient. So basically put a decimal coefficient in front of the substance that you need in order to equal the number of oxygens that you need and then double all the coefficients. This works really well, that way it doesn't modify everything that you've done thus far. So for example, right, notice it's three to two. The ideal number that I would wanna put in front of this oxygen in order to have three oxygen is one and a half because what this number times two, in this case, one and a half times two would give me three. So if you put the one and a half there, you may say, well, you can't have one and a half molecules and you're absolutely right, you can't. So what we do is we then say, okay, we're gonna double all the coefficients. So instead of the two being there, that'll become a four. Instead of the one and a half, that'll be a three. That'll become a six. And this will become a two. If you restart the tally, you can see now, if I look at the hydrogen, I now have a total of 12 hydrogen, 12 hydrogen on the right. For the nitrogen, I have four nitrogen on the left, four nitrogen on the right. And then for the oxygen, it's going to be six and six. So that's a really helpful trick. Hopefully this helped you to balance more complicated reaction types such as combustion reactions, but as always, make sure you practice and I know you'll do very well on your unit test. Thank you so much for watching.